perfect size scrap for a project I'm working on. Uh, frankly, this is so unlike me. See, I'm a firm believer that a neat, clean, well-organized shop is a shop that's safer and more productive and a lot more fun. But uh, this was a temporary setup six months ago. And I got busy. But now it's time to get rid of these plastic saw horses and these 2x6s and build a real stand for my uh, power miter saw. The question is, what should it look like? One of the things that I like to do when I'm designing and building a project is to come up with a list of design criteria, a wish list, so to speak, of things that I would like to accomplish by making the project. I've come up with a list of eight things that I would like to accomplish building this new miter saw stand. The first thing is stability and mobility. The 2x6s and the plastic sawhorses aren't bad, they're pretty stable, but it certainly isn't mobile. The second thing I'd like to have is a longer work table for cutting longer work pieces. These little extension wings come out, and that's nice, particularly out on a job site, but uh, they extend out to about 21 and a half inches, which means that uh, anything much longer than about 40 inches is uh, starting to uh, lever off the side of the table. One thing that I do a lot is repetitive cuts. Make four pieces, eight pieces, or something the same exact length. And I like to set up a stop block, and clamp it into place, so that I can cut those pieces to exactly the same size. But because this work table is so small, I can only cut short pieces or I have to rig up something to be able to do those repetitive cuts. So along with having a longer table, I'd like to have a way to put a stop on the fence and be able to do repetitive cuts. It's starting to seem like everything is about the table, but the table is important. And a long workspace on one side or the other would give me uh, some additional workspace. So if I were to clear that off, take the fence off and everything, I might have some extra space to do some assembly work or to put some parts while I'm staging them for other work. This miter saw has so far proven to be quite good. However, I do want to future-proof my design because you never know. With advancing technology, miter saws just keep getting better and better. And who knows, I may win the lottery and be able to get an even better miter saw in the future. You know, no matter what the design looks like, though, it won't mean much unless I can control the mountains of dust that come out of these things. Miter saws are notorious for throwing off sawdust. I'd like to design a table that would integrate dust control right into it. The last design consideration is, as it always is, space. One of the more difficult decisions that I've come to is to retire my radial arm saw. Frankly, for the last few years, all I've done is make cross cuts with it. And yes, it's a very versatile machine. And don't get me wrong, this baby cuts good. But you know, the technology of miter saws has gotten so good in the last few years that I can see no appreciable difference between the cuts on my miter saw and the cuts on my radial arm saw. And having both machines is just not a luxury that I can afford from a space standpoint. So I'd like to design a stand for the miter saw that gives me a little bit bigger work table, but that altogether takes up less space than these two machines. So those are my primary design considerations. There's probably a few other little things, not the least of which is storage. 
But uh, let's start doing a few sketches. For me, noodling out a design is just doodling. So um, I doodle a little bit. Now I know that one of the things that I decided to do was to make the tabletop with an inset so the miter saw can set in there and the deck of the miter saw would be level with these work surfaces. So I basically come out with something like this. But uh, to make these two work surfaces long enough, it's going to make this thing pretty big. I know from experience that when I'm cutting most of the time with long work pieces, I hang the long work pieces off to the right hand side. Maybe that's because I'm left handed, but uh, what I could do is I could make this non-symmetrical and make a longer side on the right and a little shorter side on the left. And my miter saw sitting in here, I could cut long work pieces over here. That's, uh, that might work. I want to make this pretty thick because I want it to be strong. I'd like for the top to be able to be separated from the unit and that way when I had need to move it or even if I needed to take the top out to a work site I could do that. So I'd probably make this something like a torsion box and make it really strong. Probably put laminate on the top. Maybe put some fences up there and some T-track. And then just like the desk, shop desk that I built i just put pedestal bases under here and uh, use it to support that. And uh, put wheels on it, of course. Real fancy. That one's a little small, but it'll still work. And I'll make sure that these are locking casters so the whole thing will be sturdy. Then, uh, got to figure out what to do here. I've got a lot of space I could utilize for something. I could put in drawers. But then by the same token, I got a lot of shorts and cutoffs of wood that uh, accumulate. And I'm always looking for just the right piece. Maybe if I turn this into kind of a uh, honeycomb sort of uh, setup, you know, I could have pine and poplar and oak and maple and walnut and, you know, separate them out that way. Over here, I could put in drawers because I really like drawers. Um, the more I thought about that, though, I actually think I could make these slide out trays and put Festool sustainers on those trays and get them up off the floor and have access to them at any time. That might work pretty good. And while I could still build this like a torsion box, I could make these drawers in here. I just love drawers. It keeps everything sort of dust free. That might work out pretty good. So that's kind of noodling out a design. And uh, so now what I need to do is get some dimensions and actually put something on paper and see what it would look like. The first critical dimensions to working out this design are the saw itself. Now, we want the tables on, that are extension tables on either side to match the height of the work table on the saw itself. And uh, that height is three and three quarters inch, just a smidge above three and three quarters inch. So, I want to make sure I get that. Um, the overall length of the saw is just about 26 and a half, call it 27 inches. So the inset space that it goes into has got to be 27 inches, give or take a smidge. And uh, it looks like the depth needs to be around 24 inches would be about right. So about 24 inches deep. And uh, let's just round it off and say 28 inches wide for the uh, recess and uh, three and three quarter inches high. So that'll be my inset in the work table. The other thing to consider on the tabletop is the actual length. So that an eight foot long board doesn't pivot off the table, something more than half that board needs to be on the table. So 49 inches minimum and it won't have a tendency to pivot off the table and you don't have to hold it as rigidly. So from the center line out, if I could make the table 49 inches long on the right hand side, that would be uh, pretty much ideal. It doesn't have to be as long on this side 
Height-wise, I've kind of enjoyed this height. This has been about right uh, for me, because I'm pretty tall. I actually wouldn't even mind it being a little bit taller than this. So that gives me some overall dimensions. Let's start drawing. You don't need to be an expert to make a useful drawing, I'm sure not. But it really helps to see a project drawn out to scale so that you can get an idea how it's going to look. I started off by drawing the top of the miter saw station, getting those critical dimensions correct. The depth of the cutout for the miter saw, I'm going to make that 3 and 25, 30 seconds of an inch. So the work table will be just a smidge taller than the deck of the saw itself. That way, I can use some thin shim stock to get the saw to the perfect height. As mentioned before, I'm going to make the width of the saw deck 28 inches. Overall, the length of the entire miter saw station is going to be 86 inches. In my case, I decided to make the right hand table work table longer, 36 inches to be precise. Since the miter saw is going to be in the middle of a 28 inch space, half of that are 14 inches, plus the 36 inches to the right of the saw is 50 inches, meaning that trimming off the end of an 8 foot long board, I'll have a little over half that board supported by the work table. On the other side, I'm going to make the work table 22 inches long. No magic to that dimension, actually it was a little arbitrary. In order to get the strength to support a nearly 90 pound saw, I'm going to make the top assembly pretty thick, 7 inches. I've drawn in some dividers and I'll be making drawers to fit between them. Both the cabinets underneath are going to be 2 inches narrower than the section of the top above them. Even though overall this design is asymmetrical, this will give some symmetry to the project. I also thought that the resulting 32 inches of space side to side between the two pedestals would give me a little bit more legroom. Not being an expert in drafting, I drew everything as butt joints, but everything is really going to be dados. I know that, you know that, so there's no really good reason to spend a lot of time drawing that in. You may notice that I've labeled all the parts. I don't always make cut lists, but for this project, I wanted to be as efficient as possible with the use of plywood. The cut list is really more to help me figure out how much plywood to buy and whether or not to get the store to make any cuts before I bring the plywood back to the shop. In the cut list, you'll notice that some of the measurements have a little squiggly line in front. I think that squiggly line means approximately. Well, to me, it means, wait, don't cut that piece until you're ready for it so you can cut it to exact size. You'll also notice that conspicuously absent from the drawing is any hood for the dust collection. Frankly, my brain is on overload and I've decided to get some more advice before proceeding there. Since any dust hood will be detachable, I figure I can build it after the whole miter saw station is finished. Okay. Maybe that sounds like procrastination, but it works for me. Well, I think I've just about got a design noodled out. I'm going to sleep on it, though, see if I come up with any new ideas. But you be sure and come back for the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.